When you think of Amtrak, you probably think that they're exclusively a passenger railroad. However, at one point in Amtrak's history, the railroad tried to carry different kinds of freight. When the Rail Passenger Service Act was introduced in 1970, it authorized the creation of a corporation to operate exclusively intercity passenger rail and to take over this service from the railroads that preceded it. This corporation would later be known as Amtrak and to take over intercity passenger service from the private railroads on May 1, 1971. In the years leading up to this, the United States Postal Service was phasing out the old-fashioned railway post offices, or RPOs. This was as planes and trucks started carrying mail, with mail sorting being almost completely mechanized, negating the time saving of the RPOs. The Postal Service discontinued the majority of railway post offices one day before Amtrak would start operation on April 30, 1971. However, on a small scale, these services would be transferred over to Amtrak. Amtrak would briefly operate RPOs between New York and Washington, but these services were phased out in 1977. Amtrak would instead begin to carry mail and other kinds of express freight in its fleet of baggage cars that it had inherited from the railroads that it took over service from. This service would be different from the railway post offices that preceded it, as there would be no sorting of mail in these cars like there was inside of the RPOs. In the early years, these services would be rather limited due to their lack of dedicated equipment and being too inconvenient for most customers other than the post office who only use this service rarely. As the years passed, Amtrak still failed to turn a profit like it was instructed to upon its formation in 1971. Several different CEOs were rotated in and out of the position to try and rectify the problem. This resulted in Amtrak being more involved in the express freight and mail business as it moved to rectify its money problems. Amtrak ordered their first dedicated cars for the service, which were known as material handling cars, which were more or less just box cars with modified trucks to allow for operation at 110 miles per hour. These cars were used for almost exclusively mail shipments and were delivered in two batches in 1986 and 1988. Amtrak would carry on operating these cars on the regularly scheduled passenger train, but on the Northeast Corridor running from Washington, D.C. to Boston, there were oftentimes dedicated cargo-only trains made up of exclusively material handling and baggage cars. In the 1990s, Amtrak also began operating road railers as well. These were semi-truck trailers that were capable of being hauled on rails as well, hence the name. The first road railers were designed for mail and were exclusively used by the post office. But as time progressed, Amtrak added more road railers to their fleet, some of which had refrigeration units for produce. Throughout the 1990s, these road railers and material handling cars could be seen at the rear of several Amtrak passenger trains traveling across the country. Amtrak was serious about being in the rail freight business, they even created new routes primarily for transporting freight, which was evident in their schedules being inconvenient for passengers, but perfect for freight traffic. However, this freight service scheme wasn't without its problems. The freight service would oftentimes inconvenience passengers, as trains would be delayed due to the added time it would take to add and remove freight cars. Oftentimes, the freight cars on Amtrak weren't full and would run partially or completely empty due to Amtrak's large network area, but relatively small amounts of cars. Amtrak had also been planning this service for so long that by the time it was implemented, it was inefficient compared to other means of moving freight and mail. But all of these issues was nothing compared to the issue that shut down Amtrak's rail freight operations for good. The same railroads or their predecessors that Amtrak took over inner city passenger service from, which were now exclusively freight railroads, were complaining that Amtrak was taking away business from them by being involved in rail freight. These railroads went to court and got an injunction against Amtrak for being in violation of the very act that created the corporation. Just like that, Amtrak Freight Service was stopped in 2003. Much of the equipment used was not worth anything to any other operator, so it sat around with some of it eventually being scrapped. However, Amtrak does still ship things other than bags inside their baggage cars. Amtrak Express Shipping is a service that individuals can use to ship things on Amtrak trains, but only on certain routes and between certain stations. This service was still active, but it was stopped in October of 2020, and it has not been said when or if the service will resume. That concludes the time that Amtrak tried to carry freight. It was definitely a unique service that Amtrak offered in its quest for profitability that it is still yet to achieve. Be sure to subscribe.